in space. No one can hear you. Slam out Peggy! Mio here. And Kido here to tell you that Nani, there's an alien anime. That's right. This is an 80s style anime that takes place in the world of the alien franchise. And it only took one man and a very small crew six years to put together the film. To say that it was a passion project would be an understatement. So don't you dare state it. It'd be under. <laughs> but before we dive into the film itself, we should get some background details. <clears throat> This retro style short film was created by the animator Paul Johnson, also known by his YouTube channel name Ota King Animation, along with his co creator and fellow artist Claudia Montiag, aka Maki. Ota King is possibly best known for his animated short, TIE Fighter short film. The name is Uninspired. But the short is very good and very popular, and it set the Star Wars side of the internet on fire. <laughs> Paul Johnson is a self-taught animator who grew up in the 80s and 90s period, and his style was heavily inspired by those classic anime times, with its heavy focus on shading and lighting. He also likes a lot of mecha anime and classic sci-fi movies, hence why he chose to make an alien film. He started learning animation while he was translating Japanese light novels, and before that, he worked in the good old Mickey D's, although apparently McDonald's over the pond are just built different. And while working there, he witnessed a surprising amount of drunken violence and bloodshed. Maybe that inspired this animation. We're gonna go dive into the animation now, but but if you haven't seen it before, feel free to go pause the video and watch it and then come back. Or, you know, watch this video, then go watch the animation, because this video probably won't do it justice. But we will try. Enough with the chit chat. Let's begin. The animation opens up with a mining hauler called the Thanatos. The shots of the ship are pretty cool. And you can tell that's an 80s style anime. You also get some sweet, sweet sound mixing. Fun fact, there's actually a Game Boy Color game called Alien Thanatos Encounter that was released in 2001, where you have to clear levels of aliens on a ship called, you guessed it, the Thanatos. Thanatos is also the god of death, specifically peaceful death in Greek mythology, which might make sense later in the animation, but you know, maybe not. Anyway, the hauler is on its way to an off-grid mining field. We then see some highly detailed shots of the inside of the ship, before an announcement is made by the ship's computer assistant, Conrad, that our crew has reached a destination waypoint. Only one member of the crew is joined from her spacey slumber, and her name and title is Technician Ashlyn. She's got six-pack abs, a scar on her shoulder, and well-defined duck lips. Ashlyn grumpily wakes up and asks what time it is. The answer is 7.43 a.m. on a Monday, and the date is April 26th, which is the same day that the first Alien movie briefly went back to theaters this year. Oh my gosh, there are references! 0743, Monday, 26th of April. <sighs> Great. I hate Mondays. Hey, that's Garfield's line, you give it back! Ashlyn makes herself a hearty breakfast of hot coffee and steaming slop, and hey, that coffee animation's pretty good. But there's no freaking way she just put that steaming spoon of food in her mouth. Her mouth is gone. Turns out the Waypoint Rock thing they stopped by has some nice materials, and even better, no other ships are around. Nice. Ashlyn asks if the captain is awake, and Conran says no, which she would have known if she just looked over at his pod. It was on the other side of the room. But some people are just so lazy. <laughs> Technology making kids so lazy, lazy these days, my word. Anyway, she asks where the third member of the crew, Grayson, is, and it seems that he's been in the cargo bay for the last three days. Now that sets off alarm bells in my head, personally, but Ashlyn thinks that Grayson has been slacking off and heads off to the cargo bay. Will someone stop the gosh dang dripping and mop up the gosh dang floor? Someone may hurt themselves! And no wet floor sign, lawsuit incoming! Ashton arrives at the cocoa bay, but instead of finding a living Grayson, she finds a non-living one, complete with decaying odor and maggots. Ew. Right next to his body is some kind of egg sack. It opens up, and a facehugger skitters out. Double ugh! Ashlyn, like any other sane person, runs out of the cargo bay. <laughs> But oh no, she's not alone in the corridor. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what did I just tell you? Ashton books it out of there, and the running scene has some of the best animation in the short film, in my opinion. Mr. Talking is really good at drawing expressions, so Ashton definitely looks scared spitless. You can tell that this short is only anime inspired due to the lack of excessive jiggle physics. What's the note right there? Maybe we shouldn't put this in the video. Oh. Ashton gets to safety and shuts the door, and peeking through the window, she sees that she was just in time. Her running full speed and shutting the door as fast as she can, only to have the xenomorph right behind her without her being able to hear it move, is terrifying. Oh no, oh no! 
After panicking for a bit, Ashlyn decides that the best course of action is to depressurize different sections of the ship in hopes of killing the creature, or at least kicking it out of the ship. She also tells Conrad the computer to wake up the captain. Unfortunately, her plan doesn't quite work. F yep, I would have the same reaction. Ashlyn's looking for the xenomorph, but luckily she doesn't have to waste too much time because the creature comes to her. By the way, somebody in the comments of this video mentioned that depressurizing the section of the ship would have depressurized her room as well because of the vent. So she should have put her mask on and told Conrad to keep the captain in his pod. But there could be doors in the vents, maybe, that shut, maybe, who knows, maybe? Irrelevant! Because just then the captain's pod opens up and he wakes up and is greeted in the worst way possible. By a xenomorph with rank morning breath. Needless to say, the captain gets killed. A lot. I do not know what the alien had against the captain, but oof, that was straight up personal. That was vindictive right there. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. It's kind of weird that the captain's pod took so long to open, even though it looked like it didn't take that long for Ashlyn's pod to open, but it's also kind of hard to say for sure. Either way, very unlucky and needlessly cruel for the dude to go out that way. F's in the chat. But if nothing else, the captain was a nice distraction, and Ashlyn sneaks out and backs herself right into a corner. Rats. But when the xenomorph is coming towards her, she tells Conrad to open the airlock, and the xenomorph gets sucked out into space. It attaches itself to the drill machine, and Ashlyn tells Conrad to disengage the drill's docking clamp so it floats away. And that almost works. Until the alien decides that it's actually not done doing its business on the ship, and jumps back towards the Thanatos. Thanatos. Thanatos? Irrelevant! With no other option, I guess, Ashlyn jumps towards slash past the creature and lands on the drill machine. The whole scene is very cool because there is no sound going on. Because, you know, you're in space. Hey, so long. See you, sucker. Bon voyage. Arrivederci. Later. Lose a goodbye. Good she then puts the Thanatos on a collision course with the Waypoint Rock. The ship crashes into the rock, causing a massive explosion that knocks Ashlyn out because she didn't move her drill farther away. Maybe that wasn't possible. I don't know. But when she wakes up, she got 34 hours of oxygen left and no contacts around. So she may be screwed. Or maybe something might happen in the next 34 hours. I'm an optimist and I like happy endings, so I'll say that anything could happen. I'm not going to say how likely it is. And that is the end of the animation. It's a short film, so, you know, I would like it if it was longer, but 15 minutes took about six years, so I'm happy with what we got. Time to review the film! Like we said earlier, there's a few plot contrivances and arguable plot holes, such as the vent thing, the explosion thing, and why no one mopped up the dang floor. But those are pretty minor gripes. They didn't destroy our experience. That being said, the captain did deserve better. The anime-esque style is refreshing to watch, and it's nice to see people appreciate the 80s style animation. One of our fave anime is Yu Yu Hakusho, and the shading in this anime reminds us of the Doctor vs. Yusuke fight, which is one of our favorite things ever. If you know, you know. One thing we did notice is that there's a lot of unnecessary shots in the short film that don't really accomplish anything. But the attention to detail is appreciated. And if you don't appreciate it, we can't be friends. I'm sorry, it just won't work out. We're too different, you and I. It's a pretty dread-inducing atmosphere, and the music and sound design is quite nice. It is notable that compared to the original film, you can see the alien a lot more clearly. Speaking of the xenomorph, it is cool seeing the original xenomorph design from the first movie. So props for nostalgia. There are only two voice actors, and they both do a good job. Conrad? Can you hear me? Affirmative, Technician Ashley. Though you are drifting out of comms range. One sounds like a robot or an AI, and the other one sounds like a woman. So if nothing else, they sound accurate. And I think the voice actress does a good job of sounding very scared, which is sometimes rather hard to do. So yeah, Alien Monday, really good. I suggest you watch it. If you like Otaku's animation style, he has worked on several projects, including some studio-funded projects like Prisoner Zero and some Doctor Who animations, as well as some of his own independent adventures, such as retro anime R-Type. These are quite impressive, and you should definitely check them out if you are interested. Hit that subscribe button on his channel, and you know, our channel, if you want to as well, if you like this video. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. But that's the end of this video. We have nothing else to say. So if you want to go watch another video, watch this one over here. Or this one over here. Until we see you there, in the wise words of the Alien Queen, goodbye. Paul Johnson is a thought... <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty bold stance to take.